My name is Jeffrey Can, and you're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled Overcoming the Board Digital Deficit. With oil and gas so far behind in dealing with digital change, what can boards do to move the needle? Boards of directors on oil and gas companies are seeking tangible and practical things that they can do to address digital change, or so I was told this past week when I was visiting idyllic Lake Louise as one of six presenters at the Peterson Co. annual Winter Energy Conference. My talk was on the impact of digital on the energy industry, drawn principally from a recent publication where I was a peer reviewer, and I concluded my remarks with some pointed advice for boards and management on digital. The oil and gas industry lags other sectors in adopting new digital ways of working. This isn't just my point of view. The same message is coming through in numerous publications, analyst reports, and industry surveys. It shows up most starkly in the capital markets. The top six largest companies in the world by market cap are now all digital businesses. Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Tencent. Oil and gas businesses used to own this distinctive position, but no longer. Sure, some of the largest businesses in the world by revenue are oil and gas concerned, but the market is not swayed by revenue, it would seem. Most, if not all, publicly traded oil and gas companies will have some kind of stock option scheme or share distribution program for their employees and managers. My sense is that to put some froth into the share price of an oil and gas company, it needs to have a story to tell Wall Street and Bay Street how it's dealing with technology-driven change. This must start at the board, who will have the final say on where companies invest. Candidly, boards are not well positioned to understand, or let alone endorse, digital strategies and investments. Digital, blockchain, augmented reality, the Internet of Things, additive manufacturing, machine learning, crowdsourcing, social media, these are all modern inventions. Board selection committees sensibly seek experience for their ranks, and the digital industry is too young to have spawned enough mature, experienced, board-quality hands in anything like the number needed to meet demand. Boards need to do and take some different steps. Here are 10 practical things that boards of oil and gas companies can do to help their organizations get better positioned to meet the wave of digital change. Number one is to build depth in digital. Boards will struggle to address digital issues without enough expertise to leverage. Since that expertise does not exist at the board level, they should be asking management to invest in getting digital expertise inside the company. That expertise could be in the form of a small team whose task is to help the company and board understand and anticipate the digital shifts in the economy. Next is to add some leadership. Despite my earlier claim that there's likely not enough digital talent to satisfy board-level demand, boards should still try to add some digital expertise to their ranks. The biggest oil and gas companies have already added digital depth to their boards. Retired Google executives may be both rare and expensive, but there are bound to be serving executives in the more mature technology companies that could be valuable. And Here I'm thinking Cisco, IBM, and the telcos. If not full board members, there's certainly room to set up digital advisory councils and board committees. Next, try visiting Silicon Valley. If digital is struggling to get into oil and gas, then take oil and gas to the center of digital. By this, boards could pay a visit to any of the campuses of the digital giants. Yes, they're a bit secretive, and they all seem to have initiatives intended to disrupt transportation fuels, but in general, they want new markets too and they would value getting to know such a revenue-rich industry. Many have announced industry verticals, such as Apple, or are already widely deployed in oil and gas, including Microsoft, and they would value in hearing from the customer. Next could be to visit or sponsor some of the action centers. There are lots of incubators and accelerators, I've counted 15 in Calgary alone, that are always looking for funding and participation. Some are freestanding, others are part of the university or college, uh, community colleges uh, system. Membership is generally modest, maybe 50k, to get a front row seat to the developing action. I would conduct a scan of the incubators and accelerators and confirm who might be looking for sponsorship in exchange for some influence over who the incubator nurtures. And note that the accelerators might not be in the hometown, as digital innovation these days can happen anywhere. Next, try to get on the board of a tech startup. Boards should be challenging their own ranks why they're not actively seeking advisory roles in technology startups. Trust me, tech startups lack business experience. Most are headed by a founder with an idea, and they need all kinds of help of just the sort that board experience can offer. I'm seeing this firsthand with the community that I advise. Tech startups need insight on how to sell to oil and gas, how to overcome adoption inertia, and how to price their innovations. Next is to run some experiments. Oil and gas tends to be quite skittish with adopting change, and rightly so, but there's still plenty of scope for experimentation that doesn't involve blowing things up. 
Data is a case in point. There's ample room to take data and feed it into machine learning to see what comes out, or into an augmented reality viewer to see who might use it. Boards should be challenging management <clears throat> to identify and run three no-risk digital experiments every six months, if not faster. And some, by the way, should absolutely be at the plant level. Next is to try and start a lab. With all the empty office space in some of the oil and gas towns, and I'm looking at you, Calgary, boards should be asking management why some of that space is not being put to use as a digital sandbox, a workshop, a maker studio, or a clean tech hatchery. The space is paid for. It might not be perfect, but startups will appreciate being in the downtown and not in some garage out near the airport. At least one company in Calgary has set aside a chunk of their underutilized facility and has turned it into a workshop for entrepreneurs, making available some of their own tools, workbenches, and equipment. Maybe you could get some students to pitch you. Today's university student has fantastic exposure to things digital and the know-how to build prototypes to prove their ideas. Recall, of course, that today's digital giants generally started out with some fresh grads and a breakout idea. Last week, while I was recruiting at Haskane, that's Calgary's business school, several enthusiastic candidates pitched me their ideas, from blockchain startups to new transportation businesses. Boards should invite the local business school students and campus clubs into a pitch-off. I think boards would benefit from seeing where the tr what the true front line is working on and the implications for attracting and retaining next-generation talent, and of course the students would appreciate a free meal. How about holding a board meeting in Estonia? The world's most aggressive digital country by far is Estonia. Boards might wish to hold a board meeting there and see about getting some meetings with the country's chief information officer to understand how the country is transitioning to a digital future. Estonia's insights will fundamentally challenge many Western business orthodoxies about commerce, governance, accountability, and business models. And last but not least, try and start a board learning program. Given the board level digital deficit, some kind of continuous learning and awareness program is required to help boards execute their role. Boards should put in place regular briefings on the latest developments and the impacts on the industry. Once a year is not enough. Key technologies that have the greatest impact on oil and gas include artificial intelligence, cloud computing, blockchain, machine learning, analytics, and eventually 3D printing. The digital deficit at the board level will not go away, and without action, the deficit will continue to grow. So boards should take some of these practical and modest actions to begin to close the digital gap. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.